recently swapped over to a gas range in place of our standard slide-in electric range. Um, we were met with many hurdles when we went to do this. Uh, we purchased a setup for natural gas range from the store and swapped it over ourselves to, to propane. But the act of actually getting the propane into the house, given that we do not have natural gas at our location, uh, proved to be a challenge. Kind of like you would normally encounter with someone off grid um, or in a remote location that is not really able to, to get a propane service to their house or a natural gas line. This surprised us and ended up leading us to doing a DIY route. Now, I'm an engineer by education, but not a gas engineer. And if you don't really know what you're doing here, please have a professional do it. You need to know your local codes. You need to make sure everything is installed and inspected properly. And you don't want to play around with, with propane or natural gas as it's extremely flammable and explosive and could end up injuring you or damaging your property. Now, before we go on, the reason that we ended up going with a DIY route is because we actually ended up calling about three companies to come out and sit something like a 60 pound uh, or 60 gallon propane tank um, on our site. This would normally be about three to four feet tall and uh, about two and a half feet in diameter. They're a nice small tank that easily holds a year's worth of propane for something like a range and someone can come out and fill it with a standard hose from a truck and you don't ever have to move it, you don't think about it, you pay your service charge and it's essentially like having a natural gas line and that you don't ever have to really think about it other than when you need to call for propane. So the first company that we called uh, said that if we were just using it with a range we would not meet their annual requirements and they wouldn't even come and set a tank for us even if we paid for the tank ourselves. This was not really an option um, they definitely wouldn't rent us a tank. So the second company that we called never returned our phone calls. Uh, multiple phone calls, emails, and I, while I got somebody that said they would return our call later with a specialist, we never heard from anyone. So they obviously didn't want our business. And the third company, well, not only did they not want to deal with us, but their fees are something reminiscent of essentially a cable TV company. <laughs> you end up with an early termination fee of $149, a fuel recovery fee of $5, that's for the gas to power their trucks to get them here to fill your tank, hazmat fee of $11.99, a leak check charge if you need it checked for leaks, a meter fee of $11.99, a pump out and restocking fee, reconnect charge, returned check fees, service dispatch charge should you call within 48 hours to need it filled, a special trip charge if they're not in your area, tank rental fees, will call service fee of $7.99 per delivery, Overall, this ended up being essentially $50 to $60 on top of the cost of the propane that would go in our tank per trip. That pretty much amounts to the amount of the propane I would be having them fill if I were to fill it a couple times a year. So this was definitely not an option. It was off the table. Now... We had looked at having one set. Again, this was not an option. We didn't want someone to come and fill it after dealing with all of this, um, if we could even get someone to come and fill it. And a 60 pound tank is not really something that I can lift and carry myself, or a 60 gallon, excuse me, tank. These are large tanks that weigh hundreds and hundreds of pounds. And once they're in place, they're pretty much in place and you only move them empty. So we ended up looking at essentially a lot of the route that uh, people in RVs, um, mobile homes, things like this take, or off-grid cabins um, and low propane usage. And most part, we were finding something to the order of people using one or more 100-pound tanks. The tank that looks like a standard grill tank, but about three to four times as uh, high. Now these weigh about 170 pounds when full. So while empty, I could maneuver it around our property easily. Um, they're also supposed to be transported upright. So 170 pound tank and some places will not even fill them if you have to lay them down because it voids the safety valve. So 
given that I could not transport it upright and didn't want to lug around a 170 pound tank, I had pretty much ruled out the 100 pound tank option. That left us with very few others. The standard grill tank is of course appealing. You can swap them out at pretty much any store and they're very light, very easy to carry. But when you start looking at the tables for what a range actually uses, it becomes a non-starter. So a standard gas range like ours uses about 65,000 BTUs an hour. This is the max capacity with all burners running, but still something that I would like to be able to do should the need arise. Now, with most propane tanks, this is not a problem. A grill tank can pretty much not supply that, regardless of temperature, unless it's 80, 90 degrees outside. Essentially what's happening is your propane is stored as a liquid in the tanks. And when it is no longer under pressure, such as when the valve is open and the propane's free to escape, this exceeds the boiling point of the liquid and vaporizes. This vaporization capacity is essentially the max amount of BTUs that you can pull out of the tank as a vapor to power your appliance at a given temperature. So while some of these tanks were fine at 80 degrees, 90 degrees, even down to 50 and 60, as you started getting toward the winter temperatures where we are of, you know, 15 to 30 degrees, you ran into problems where you would far exceed the vaporization capacity of not just one tank, but multiple tanks even combined. So what we ended up doing is after reading all of the charts for, and going over the vaporization capacity of the different tanks, we came up with two 40 pound tanks in parallel. Now a normal RV or camper would have two uh, 30 or 40 pound tanks usually, and they would be connected in series essentially with a failover, a redundancy. So one is kept in reserve and you feed from one tank, the regulator then senses the pressure drop and switches over to the other tank, allowing you to swap tanks back and forth and have one always full and one being filled at any given time. What we've done here is essentially connected the two tanks into a T to combine the gas from both tanks at the same time. So we're pulling from both. This allows us to have the vaporization capacity of the two 40 pound tanks. So we stay above our 65,000 BTU, uh, all burners on capacity of our range, pretty much down to, you know, the five to 10 degree mark. And even then that's gonna be the most extreme that we could pull with our cooking setup. So we've essentially taken these two tanks and combined them into a larger one. Now these are about the same diameter as a 100 pound tank, but the vaporization capacity of the tanks is based on the surface area of the air to liquid inside the tank, as well as the temperature and the pressure. This also will change with the capacity. So as you get lower, you've got less vaporization capacity within the tank um, as you're as your fuel level decreases. With a 100 pound tank being about the same diameter, you effectively have the same surface area of your fuel inside your tank. With two 40 pound tanks, we effectively have double the surface area. So while we don't have the same capacity overall, allowing us that vaporization, we end up with twice the surface area, equating this more to a horizontal tank than a vertical, which gives us better capacity. Our two tanks are combined using a Marshall Excelsior uh, high flow stainless braided hose because we didn't want squirrels and, and different rodents and things chewing on the rubber and we wanted to protect it from UV. These go into two gas rated valves so that we can shut off one or both tanks should the need arise. And from there they go into a dual stage regulator also from Marshall Excelsior. Now this regulator is a low capacity, really designed for one appliance or multiple very small demand appliances. Uh, the way that you select your regulators is going to be that you add up whatever your demand is for what appliances you want on this in BTUs. A lot of times this will be on the nameplate by the regulator or add up the total capacity of all of your burners, uh, including your inside stove burners. 
you take this and you want to make sure that is in the range of like 30 to 80 or 90 percent of the capacity of your regulator. So you don't want a huge regulator. While it seems like, you know, bigger is always better, and if I have enough gas, what does it matter? It essentially would be like trying to get a faucet trickle of water out of the gate from a water dam. As small as it can go is really not enough to regulate, and your temperatures in your cooking could actually end up varying fairly wildly, and you could end up running into problems such as regulator freeze up um, when you can't actually close off the valve enough inside to regulate the flow going through this. Now, with an appropriately sized regulator, um, we're going from there into a, from 3 8 into a half inch um, schedule 40 black gas line. This will be painted and sealed on the outside. Um, we're not running a very far distance either, but this is a nice hard way to do it that resists damage of some of the poly lines and uh, the thinner copper lines as well. Now, we're going from here directly to our stove where we have the standard shutoff valve, um, our flex line, and that goes into the regulator of our range, which the regulator has been set up per the instructions to run off of propane. We run a two-stage regulator, um, whereas a normal large propane tank or a greater distance away would run a single stage and then a second stage closer to the residence. This is because since our tanks are very localized, we want to go immediately from our high pressure of 150 to 200 PSI in the tank, immediately down to our 10 PSI of our first stage, directly into our um, half a PSI or around 11 to 13 inches of water column that most gas appliances require. So the two-stage regulator has both of these parts built in and allows us to go directly from tank pressure to a water column of around 11 inches into our residence so that we can power our stove directly with very minimal setup. Now, we've gone with a high flow hose. These hoses are capable of 140,000 BTUs. Um, we did not need anywhere near this. However, these have safety shutoffs for leak protection. Um, there's a lot of features with them and we did not want to run the risk of accidentally triggering them if everything was running um, with a lower capacity hose, and this was kind of the next step up. Again, if you are concerned about these things, um, if you don't know what to select, uh, the customer service with Marshall Excelsior um, and some of the RV stores, things like this, uh, generally are very helpful when it comes to this and can advise you um, as can a lot of plumbers who deal specifically in gas. So we've gone with a, a standard inverted flare uh, quarter inch fitting on our hoses instead of a standard quarter inch NPT as this seemed to be the most readily available. Um, when I was searching for parts, that was the one that I encountered the most. Um, this is a fitting that does not use sealant on it. It, it has an inverted flare that seals against an inverted flare fitting. And we've used adapters with these to go from the inverted flare from your propane tank hose uh, to quarter inch NPT. This was done so that we can essentially in the future use whatever hose we need to if we need to replace it, as well as any fittings at the time of installation. If we needed to change something out, we effectively could use both. We found that the inverted flare fittings to NPT were far more common than the opposite, and that going from quarter inch NPT to inverted flare was almost impossible. Now, both of our propane tanks here are fed at the same time, and one of the big benefits that we found with going with two smaller tanks fed at the same time as opposed to a larger tank is the ability for a lot of accessories that relate to RVs. So not only do these have a lower profile and less visibility um, from the road, things like that, they're easier to carry, but we also are using some features that you can only get up to a 40 pound tank. So with these, we're using a system 
um, known as tank check, which is a Bluetooth sender that mounts to the bottom of the tank with magnets and allows us to monitor the amount of fuel level that is still left in each tank. We can do this from inside the house, by our stove even, just to quickly double check, set alarms when it drops below 15 to 20 percent fuel remaining, and this is only available for 20, 30, or 40 pound standard DOT tanks. So if you do go with a 100 pound tank, some things like this are not really an option. With mounting systems, um, should you need that, mounting a 40 pound tank is generally a lot easier than uh, the larger 100 pound tanks. And again, carrying them is not super fun. Now, we have gotten uh, all of the appropriate rain covers and, and things for these regulators. There were lists in the guide of, of what you need to use these outdoors. Some RVs and campers are meant to really have these inside a special um, gas locker that's on the side of them. And so you really wanna go with an installation more like a trailer tongue installation, where it's going to be susceptible to the weather and to UV shining on them. Those are the accessories that you're going to want to select to go with your tanks. The setup of this was very straightforward. We didn't really need to measure anything. We leak checked everything uh, and turned things on a little at a time. And after setting up the range and turning on our gas, we purged the air out of the line and ended up with a lovely blue flame with very slight orange um, on occasion on the tips, which is exactly what you wanna see with a propane setup. Overall, we've been using the, the range for a little while now, and our cooking has been very consistent. Um, baking has been very consistent. The flame is wonderful and it ignites perfectly. Um, we're not really having any issues. We've had cold mornings where it appeared to work exactly the same as the warmer afternoons. So all in all, we're extremely happy with this setup and are really glad that we DIY'd this. This would be the same setup essentially that you would use if you were in the middle of nowhere and needed to transport these tanks by yourself to a local filling place or anything like that. Now, these are readily fillable at a lot of uh, different stores, co-ops, um, even campgrounds, and you'd be surprised at how many are probably near you. So if your propane company wants to be like the cable company and charge you exorbitant fees, or just won't service you at all, and if your local regulations allow a setup like this, because some will not allow DOT tanks, uh, portable tanks for a permanently installed appliance, but if you do allow it, uh, we found that this to be an extremely uh, good way to go for powering our range and are so far very happy. Um, we'll update this in the future with uh, how much fuel we've used in a given time, but with our standard range usage, we expect this to last uh, four to six months. So filling maybe three times a year or so, and that's not that big of a deal. These tanks only weigh about 70 pounds when full and weigh about 30 pounds or so when empty. So it's really not that difficult to take them to the local filling area and have it filled. We have our shutoffs so we can shut off one tank at a time should we need to take one out of service. Um, but again, these are really meant to run simultaneously to provide us with the vaporization of essentially an 80 pound tank. Overall, we're extremely happy with this. Um, we've set a, a nice little stepping stone pad here and we couldn't be happier with it. So if you all liked this, um, if you want to see more of this kind of thing and some of the other stuff that we do, uh, check our website and like, subscribe, and click that alarm and we'll see you in the next one.